Hello, people of St. Bart's. Chris Myers here with your weekly newsletter. We are very firmly into the season of Lent now. Uh, Advent 1 was this past Sunday, and I'll be preaching uh, this coming Sunday for Advent 2. And for this video, I wanted to talk briefly about some of the things that are strange about Advent. For one, Advent is strange because it cuts against where the culture is at the exact same time period. Advent begins the church calendar, but it's a time of reflecting and expectation and waiting and longing. And we meditate on things like Jesus coming back again. We meditate on what it is to be ready and awake uh, for his coming again. And those themes are very different from the larger cultural themes that have already sort of moved into Christmas full-heartedly. And we are in a posture of preparing ourselves for Christmas. So that can feel strange sometimes, that our Advent wreath is a very different thing than a Christmas tree, that the Advent wreath is this collection of candles where the light grows over time, and that that growing light is meant to match our growing um, hope and expectation for the coming of Jesus. That's different than just having the Christmas tree all ready to go. Not that it's bad to have a Christmas tree ready to go, but it's a different kind of headspace. It's a different kind of posture. So part of what I'm hoping to do by pointing out the strangeness of Advent is to invite you into it a little bit, to invite you into that posture of waiting, into that posture of longing. And the way that Advent does that, I think, is part of the second reason that Advent can be strange, is that Advent begins at the end. What I mean by that? It's a beginning because it's the beginning of the church calendar, but it's also an ending because it shows us that first Sunday of Advent, we see a vision of Jesus high and lifted up as the one who comes to reclaim his bride, the church, and who comes to set things to right as he judges the living and the dead. And that that judgment is his enacting of justice to set things right. That's a vision of the end. Not just the end of the story, but the goal of the story, the trajectory of redemption, of what God wants for his people, what he wants for all peoples, what he wants for all of creation, for everything to be gathered up into Christ and reconciled to him. That's the end, that's the goal, that's the trajectory. And what Advent asks us to do is to begin at the end, to begin with the end in mind. As I said uh, a couple weeks ago, um, my sermon in Christ, Christ the King, is that to be a Christian is to begin with the end in mind. What is it that we're aiming our lives at? And when we have that goal or that end in mind, how do we live in the present in such a way is that we move towards that end with hope and with faithfulness? So one of the parables that is famous uh, as part of the Advent season is the parable of the ten virgins uh, who are waiting for the bridegroom and that five of them have their oil ready for when he appears and five of them don't. These five are awake, they're prepared, and these five are not. And this is a contrast between those who are waiting in a way with expectation and hope, um, who are staying awake, and with those who are not. And that's the invitation of Advent. Um, and it's part of its strangeness, because these are not necessarily the thoughts that we want to have as we're thinking about uh, Christmas coming. But I would encourage you to have those thoughts. Am I living my Christian life in such a way that it is aimed at the end, the goal, that God wants to gather all things into his Son and reconcile all things to himself? Am I living in a way that is reconciled to God? Have I accepted his reconciliation? And also, am I living out what Paul calls the ministry of reconciliation? Those are Advent questions. It's questions whereby we begin with the end in mind. So hope to see you on Sunday. Um, praying for you. Love you. We'll see you soon.